All right, so this question is quite challenging. It says, consider the following reaction and initial rates. So we have three trials of this um, reaction, and we have um, the concentration of X for each trial and the concentration of Y for each trial, and we have the initial rate that you can measure essentially by plotting it um, when you um, run the reaction. So this information will allow us to determine the rate law for this reaction, but unfortunately it's uh, quite a difficult thing to do. So the first thing we want to do is we want to write the general rate law for this reaction. So remember, this is the overall reaction. This is not the mechanism. So we don't know for the, the effect of X and the effect of Y on the rate. So rate equals K, some constant, concentration of X to the M power, because we don't know the power, concentration of y to the n power. So we don't know the concentration of x, and we don't know, or we don't know the, the significance of the change in concentration of x, right? We don't know what order it is with respect to x, and we don't know what order it is with respect to y. So we need to determine both of these things. Now, it doesn't make any difference which one you're going to determine first. I am going to determine x first, okay, because it comes first. But if you like to determine y first, determine y first. So if you'll notice here, we have an algebra problem, right? We have, we have a lot of variables. We know the rate, but we don't know k. We don't know, we know concentration of x. We don't know M, we know concentration of Y, and we don't know N. So there's three things we don't know. We don't know K, M, and N. Because of that, we have to do a math trick, if you will, um, in order to get rid of some of these variables. And the way you do that is you actually write the rate law twice, and then you divide them. Because if you write it twice and you divide them, you can make terms that aren't alike cancel out. But you have to do it in a very strategic way. You have to do it in a way such that the terms will cancel out. Specifically, what do I mean? We want to look for two trials where the concentration of X changes, but the concentration of Y remains constant. Why do we want to do that? From a mathematical perspective, that will allow us to cancel out the concentration of Y. From a practical perspective, we're looking at the rate uh, law with respect to X. So we want X to change and Y to remain constant. Because if Y stays constant, then we can look at the effect of X. If we change both, then we don't know which one is having an effect, or maybe both are having an effect, but we simply don't know. So we can only change one thing at a time. So if we look at these trials here, all right, so if we look at trial one and um, trial three, the concentration of X changes. It goes from 0.1 to 0.25. And the concentration of Y remains the same. So these are the two trials that we want to compare. So I first want to take trial one. Now, I want to rewrite this rate law exactly as up here. The only difference is I'm going to plug in the things that I know. So instead of rate for trial one, I'm going to put in 0 0.09941 equals K. I don't know K. All right. There's no K in this table. Concentration of X. I know. 0 0.100 molar. For clarity, I am um, leaving out the units, okay? Um, and then I'm going to put that to the M power because I don't know M. Concentration of Y, I know, is 0 0.100 molar to the N, I don't know N. Okay, now remember, I'm comparing trials one and three mathematically, so Y will cancel out practically because I changed the concentration of X and I didn't change the concentration of Y, so I can look at the effect of the rate on just the concentration of X. And if you notice here, the rate increased when we increased the concentration of X. So we know for sure that it's not zero order with respect to X. There are a lot of tricks here that you could use um, to make the math a little bit easier, but you also need to know how to do the math because it's possible to write a question where it's very difficult to do those tricks. Let's look at trial three. 
again, because X changed and Y didn't. So we write the initial rate of, for trial 3, 0 0.2485. Again, I'm leaving units out just to, um, for clarity. K, I don't know. Now the concentration of X for trial 3 is 0 0.250 molar to the M power. I don't know M. And the concentration of Y has not changed, 0 0.100 molar to the N, which again is going to be um, unknown, right? We don't know N. Now, what you want to do is you want to take and divide these two trials. This is how we do it mathematically. On this side, we get 0 0.09941 over 0 0.2485 equals K cancels. Okay, this doesn't cancel. So we get 0 0.100 to the M. We don't need these concentration brackets. Over 0 0.250 to the M. You actually don't need the concentration brackets at all up here. Um, I guess I don't know why I left those in. All right. And then the 0.1 to the N and the N cancels. This can be rewritten as 0 0.09941 over 0 0.2485 equals 0 0.100 over 0 0.250 all to the m power. Now we can do the math. We get over here 0 0.400 equals 0 0.400 to the m power. Now, if you wanted to solve this out, sorry, you can't see that, what you would want to do is take the log of both sides. So you would get the log of 0 0.400 equals the log of 0 0.400 to the n. Because you take the log, there's no more exponent, this multiplies. So log of 0 0.400 equals n log 0 0.400. Then you divide this side by the log of 0.4, and you divide this side by the log of 0.4. But clearly, in this case, you don't need to do that, right? Because uh, this should be an m. Um, the reason you don't need to do that is these are the same number. So if these are the same number, m has to equal 1. Okay, because they're the same number. But you can do it this way as well and just take the logarithms in your calculator. Let's take a look at Y. So for Y, which trials do we want to compare? We want Y to change and X to remain constant. So in this case, we want to compare trial 1 um, and trial 2. Okay. Now, if we look at the rates, we can see that the rate hasn't changed. So before we do all this math, we know that this is zero order with respect to Y, because changing, doubling the concentration of Y had no effect on the rate of the reaction. But if we wanted to prove that mathematically, we could take the same approach. Rate for trial one is 0 0.09941 equals K, we don't know K, concentration of um, X is 0 0.100 to the M. We now know M, but we could still pretend we don't. Okay, and then times uh, 0 0.100 to the N. Repeat for trial two, 0 0.09940, which again is almost exactly the same, equals K, the concentration of X, which is going to be 0 0.100 to the M, and the concentration of Y is 0 0.200 to the N. We then divide these out and cross out the common terms. So we get 0 0.09941 over 0 0.09940 equals 0 0.100 to the N, over 0 0.200 to the n. This is about 1 equals 0 0.500, okay, to the n. 
you could take the log of both sides, but if you uh, take the log of one, you get zero. So n equals zero. All right, so we can finally write the rate law expression for this. The rate equals k concentration of x to the one concentration of y to the zero. We can then simplify this to rate equals k concentration of x. So all of that work was required to find this concentration. Note that if multiple um, things change here, then you do have to do all the math twice. You didn't really need to do the math for the second one um, because of the fact that um, there was no change in the rate so that we knew that it was zero order. All right, so the question says, what is the overall order of the rate of the reaction? So if you haven't already watched A, you got to start with that. The overall re order of the reaction is first order because it's K, concentration of X. So it's overall a first order reaction. So you just add all the orders to find the overall order. In this case, there's only one order, so you don't really have to add it to anything. Finally, it says, what is the value of the rate constant? Well, in order to find the rate constant, In order to find the rate constant, you basically need to um, use one of the trials. So we know that this is the rate of law for the reaction. So what I'm going to use is trial one, but it doesn't really matter what trial you use. So just plug in rate is 0 0.09941 equals K times the concentration of X, which is going to be um, 0. 1, 0, 0 to the first power. And when we do this um, math, we basically take this side and divide by 0 0.01 or 0 0.100 0 divided by 0 0.100. We find that K is equal to 0 0.9941. So you would just take one of the trials. I can't fit it all on the screen here, but I took trial one. So I just used this as the concentration of X. And since it was the first power, I didn't have to multiply it by anything. I divided by both sides by 0.001 or 0.100. And I just found that this was essentially 10 times higher.